Hey everybody, and Tony here with the review of Tchaikovsky's Evgeny Onyegin, live from the Metropolitan Opera House, which I saw at the Kino and the Kotuo Brauerei. The conductor was Robin Tachati. The production was done by Deborah Warner. The sets were done by Tom Pai. The costumes were done by Chloe Obolensky. The lights were handled by Jean Kalman. The video designers were Ian William Galloway and Finn Ross and the videographer was Gary Halverson. I was anticipating this particular production of Onegin because Anna Netrebko, a soprano whose career I have been following for quite some time, I would say about 12 years in my experience with Madame Netrebko, sang the role of Tatiana, a role that she has been associating with for about, I would say, five to three years at the Met. So we'll get to her later, but first, my thoughts on the production. I thought it looked quite decent in my eyes. There were times that the set seemed a little bit cluttered in some areas, most notably in the opening scenes, because I felt like there were just certain scenes, especially some of the windows, some of the doors that kind of looked a little bit cluttered, but otherwise it looked really, really decent. And I also love the effects used for each of the opening acts. Like we have a black and white screen of fields, a snow covered landscape, or even that of a palace. And then we have act one taking place in the Larina house, act two taking place in a party, act three taking place in a forest, and act four taking place at St. Petersburg. And I thought the transitions for each of these scenes looked rather interesting. And I also liked the ball scene, which looked really, really elegant. And the final scene, well, it has that minimalistic feel, even though I would have loved the scenery to be a little bit more detailed. But overall, I have to say the production was quite decent and the costumes were actually quite gorgeous to look at, especially with that of Tatiana's and Olga's costumes. I really, really loved their dresses in the first act because they looked really, really pretty, especially when they were worn by the likes of Anna Netrebko and Elena Maximova. So overall, the production and costumes were really decent and were quite appealing in their own special way. Now we get to the singer, starting off with Anna Netrebko, who sang Tatiana. I have been following her career for quite some time. I would say that I started following her career when I was about 12 years old. And the first time I ever heard about Netrebko was when she was singing Lucia de la Mermor. And she had a cameo appearance in The Princess Diaries 2, starring Julie Andrews and Anne Hathaway, where she was singing Sempre Libera. Did I kind of start falling in love with her voice? And it wasn't until about 2011, 2010, that she started to head for the heavier roles like Anna Bolena, Lady Macbeth, and nowadays she has her sights set on the likes of Tosca, Adriana Le Couvreur, and a lot of these heavier roles. Because once upon a time, she did start off singing the coloratura soprano repertoire of Gilda, Violetta, Rosina, Amina, Elvira from Puritani, Juliette from Gounod's Romeo et Juliette. And of course, both Musetta and Mimi. Nowadays, she seems to specialize in the heavier, more spinto repertoire. My personal opinion about Anna Netrebko is a part of me doesn't really understand the hype of this particular soprano. Don't get me wrong. That doesn't mean I think she's a bad singer. No. I think she is a very wonderful singer with a very fine voice However, there are times I feel like she is a little bit over-marketed and a little bit on the overrated side. That is not to demean her talent. I have to say that she is very talented as a singer, quite meticulous, and she really knows how to use glamour as an asset every time she appears on stage. Granted, I may not be a major fan of her coloratura soprano work like Lucia or Juliette or Elvira from Puritani, even though she does a very fine job in those roles, 
but I really love her in roles like Mimi from La Boheme, Tatiana from Evgeny Onegin, and even that of Yolanta from, of course, Tchaikovsky's Yolanta. I really feel that the full lyric and even the heavier lyric soprano roles and even that of the Spinto soprano repertoire is definitely where her strengths lie. She really knew how to embody Tatiana with a great sense of beauty, charm, and she just really threw herself into the role very, very well. I could definitely understand why a lot of people like her. She has a very fine voice, which is suitable to roles like this. And nowadays that she's singing roles like Leonora from Trovatore, and she has an Aida that she's going to look forward to in Salzburg, I definitely have to say that this was one of her finest roles yet. How she embodied Tatiana was just absolutely wonderful. In the first act, she was able to make her quite girlish, quite charming, a little bit insecure, and a little bit nervous of what's going to happen. In the second act, she was able to make her still girlish and still lovely. And in the final acts of the opera, she metamorphosized into a full-grown, beautiful woman. And I definitely enjoyed her letter scene. She threw her heart and soul into that very scene that I was completely immersed in everything that she did in the letter scene. And I felt like that was her shining moment. So overall, I am not gonna mince words about Anna Netrebko saying the role of Tatiana. I thought she did an amazing job and I definitely enjoy her in roles like this. Singing the role of Tatiana's younger sister, Olga, was the wonderful Russian mezzo-soprano Elena Maximova, whose dark chocolate mezzo tones were absolutely thrilling to listen to. She was able to embody Olga with a lot of girlishness, charm, beauty, and it's all backed up by a very, very beautiful voice. I've also been following her career for quite some time. She also specializes in a huge array of roles, from the coloratura mezzo roles of Cenerentola from Rossini, to the multifaceted role of Bizet's Carmen, and even to the slightly deeper dramatic mezzo role of Madalena from Verdi's Rigoletto. This definitely proves that she is a very versatile singer, and her chemistry with Anna Netrebko as Tatiana, when it comes to them being sisters, was very, very palpable. I could definitely feel the warmth the liveliness and the overall believability that these two have as the sisters Tatiana and Olga. And I definitely love Elena Maximova's singing all throughout. She was a very fine foil to Anna Netrebko's sultry yet shy Tatiana, while Elena Maximova made her lively, bright, and lovely, which was an absolute joy. Then we go to their mother, sung by the fine dramatic mezzo, Elena Tsaremba, who did a very fine job embodying this particular role, and I really loved the color of her voice. It has that fine, warm, dark, and gravelly, rich timbre that I love in a lot of dramatic mezzos, and she just has a very warm stage presence. Then we go to Larisa Dyatkova, who sang the role of Filipievna, the old nurse. I've also been following her career for quite some time. I first heard her when I was 15, when I came back from England with my father, and I bought a CD of her singing Atsuchena, and one day I will definitely review that CD version of Trovatore starring Alanya, Georgiou, Hampson, and of course, Dyatkova and D'Arcangelo. Now hearing her as Filipievna, the old nurse, I have to say that she did an amazing job, which should be no surprise as Larisa Dyatkova specializes in a huge array 
of dramatic mezzo and dramatic contralto roles, and her voice lies in between. A lot of sources say that Larisa Diakova is a mezzo-contralto. She specialized in the contralto roles of La Checa from Pontieri's La Gioconda and Ulrika from Verdi's Un Ballo in Mascara to true dramatic mezzo roles like Amneris from Verdi's Aida, Herodias from Richard Strauss's Salome, and of course Fricka from Wagner's Rheingold and Valkyrie. One can say that Larisa Dyatkova has one of the finest mezzo-contralto voices ever, and I definitely agree. I really love how she was able to make Filipievna a warm and very loving character, and her stage presence was equally fine. Then we go to Yevgeny Onyegin, sung by Peta Mate, and oh my goodness does he have an amazing voice. It should be no surprise that about a year and seven months ago that I saw him as Wolfram from Wagner's Tannhäuser, and I thought he did an amazing job. Here, I thought he was at his finest. What I really love about Peter Mate is his absolute versatility. He really has a fine and gorgeous baritone voice, which is rich, round, and his stage presence was tall and handsome. I definitely enjoyed him in this role, which should be no surprise as once upon a time, Mr. Matei also specialized in a lot of the lyric baritone roles and the cavalier baritone roles before heading into roles like Wolfram from Wagner's Townhäuser, Amfortas from Parsifal, and especially the likes of Onyegin. And he did an amazing job. He had a very tall and handsome stage presence and I really loved the scenes that he was in with all of the singers. Then we go to Alexia Dolgov, who sang the role of Lensky. And he had a very handsome voice. He had really fine phrasing. And his overall manner on stage was quite charming. And he was the antithesis to Peta Matei's tall and dashing and really strong looking Yevgeny Onyegin. His Lensky is shorter, more svelte, and he is a lot more passionate, and let's just say he is a little bit more on the artsy side, hence the glasses that he wears from time to time. And I thought that Alexey Dolgov, when it comes to his singing, was really, really fine all throughout. He was able to give a lot of feeling to his aria, Kuda Kuda, and he's not one of those super high singing tenors. He was a very natural singer. He was able to give this role a great amount of dignity, charm, and an overall sense of passion, which he did very, very well. Stefan Kochan was a very fine Prince Gremen, which should be no surprise, as I've heard him three years ago singing the role of Kan Konchak from Alexander Borodin's Prince Igor, also live from the Met, which also starred Ildar Abdrazakov in the title role. And here, I thought he did a very solid job singing the role of Prince Gremen. Yes, I would have loved to have rounder, richer voices like Jerome Hines or Cesare Sieppi or Giorgio Tozzi, or even what we have with the likes of Gottlob Frick, or even that of Alexander Anisimov or Pata Burkholadze, but I really have to give loads of credit to Mr. Kotsan for doing a very fine job embodying the role of Prince Gremen with a great amount of authority, but at the same time making this character quite dashing, quite charming, and he was just really, really handsome to witness on stage. And he was able to provide this character a great amount of dignity, a great amount of charm, and he was able to sing his aria very, very well. Equally phenomenal were the likes of Richard Bernstein's solidly sung Tsaretsky, David Crawford's handsomely sung Captain, and of course, Tony Stevenson's character tenor voice being put to great use 
in the role of Monsieur Triquet, especially in his solo aria. So overall, the singing was really, really great all around, and I have to give loads of kudos to Ana Trepko for a very fascinating portrayal of Tatiana, a role that she has been singing at the Met for about three to four years, probably five at most. But still, I thought she did an amazing job embodying Tatiana. She made her come to life with the music, and she was just a very fine singer all throughout. And the conducting done by Maestro Robin Tichatti was equally solid. So overall, with a solid production, a star-studded cast headed by the likes of Anna Netrebko and Peta Matei, Elena Maximova, Stefan Kolchan, Alexa Dolkov, Larisa Dyatkova, and Elena Tsaremba, I definitely felt like this production of Yevgeny Onyegin was a real treat. And for those of you who saw this particular production of Evgeny Onyegin, what did you think of it? Did you feel like Anna Trepko did an amazing job seeing the role of Tatiana? And did you find a lot of really strong points and a lot of brilliant moments in her portrayal? Did you feel like there was another singer who outshone Netrebko? Or did you feel like there was someone who kind of stuck out like a sore thumb? Comment below and let me know. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to tune in next time for another review. So until then, good night, everybody.